We shall never surrender. One small step for man. I have a dream. Did all those famous people really utter those historic quotes, or has someone been playing jiggery pokery with the evidence? Professor Buzzkill sets the record straight on quote or no quote. Yes, it's me, Professor Buzzkill, busting myths, taking names, and ruining your day since God knows when. <laughs> Politics in the United States is rife with rhetorical excesses these days, and Americans are being treated to falsehoods, wild exaggerations, and anachronisms galore. Just recently, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham accused four young Democratic congresswomen of being communists. Communists. He actually said the word communist. Not only is this untrue, the way that Graham used it as an attack and a slur was laughably out of date. It's as if he stepped out of a time machine from the Joseph McCarthy communist witch hunt days of the 1950s. One of the social media responses to this and to the general demonization of, quote, socialism in whatever form, has been to create a meme of a quote supposedly by Harry Truman, president of the U.S. from the late 40s to the early 50s, 45 to 52. According to this internet meme, Truman, a Democrat, accused the Republicans of the time of intellectual and political laziness when they simply tarred any public expenditure as, quote, socialism. It was a scare word, he said, that Republicans have, quote, hurled at every advance the people have made in the last 20 years. But did Truman actually say this? Well, yes. I know this is a surprise to you buzzkillers out there because I usually destroy internet quotes as being incorrectly attributed at best and simply made up at worst. But here's some fuller context and explanation of how and when and why Truman said this. And I want to say here that I'm relying partly on the work of David Mickelson at Snopes.com and especially on the good folks at the Truman Library and Archive for the material I'm going to use. During the presidential election of 1952, Truman was out campaigning for the Democratic nominee Adlai Stevenson, who was running against the Republican nominee Dwight Eisenhower. Now, Truman was in Syracuse, New York on October 10th, 1952, during a whistle-stop tour of the Northeast. Speaking from the rear platform of the last car of the train, as was often done in those days, Truman complained that Ike and other powerful Republicans, quote, opposed almost all our programs to help the economic life of the country, end quote, and that they, quote, blindly turned their backs on the tradition of public action for the public good. Truman then specifically targeted powerful Republican Senator Robert Taft, who'd said that the biggest danger facing the country in 1952 was creeping socialism promoted by the Democrats. So Truman shot back at Taft and Ike and other Republicans from that back platform where the last car on the train in Syracuse in 1952, October 1952. Quote, Socialism is a scare word they have hurled at every advance the people have made in the last 20 years. Socialism is what they call public power. And by this, by the way, Buzzkiller's Truman meant electrical power, especially hydroelectric power, which had been a really big deal in the 30s and 40s. Socialism is what they call social security. Socialism is what they called farm price supports. Socialism is what they called bank deposit insurance. Socialism is what they called the growth of free and independent labor organizations. Socialism is their name for almost anything that helps all the people. When the Republican candidate inscribes the slogan, quote, down with socialism on the banner of his, quote, great crusade, that's not what he really means at all. What he means is, quote, down with progress, down with Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, and down with Harry Truman's fair deal. That is what he means. End quote. Now, being a professional buzz killer, when I saw this quote in the various memes it has generated coursing around the internet, I kind of, of assumed it was a misquote, or at the very least, a misattribution. So I was floored, you might say, to learn that 
the buck stops here, Harry actually said it, and that he spoke out so extensively and defended these social programs so strongly. Given that the Cold War against the godless communists and the godless socialists was gearing up at this time, you know, this really took some backbone. Well, historically, what's been the nature and extent of American ideas about socialism or social democracy or democratic socialism or, or whatever you want to call it? Well, we can debate that until the commies come home. But it's virtually certain that the questions about which types of social programs were American and which were socialist, godless, communist, go all the way back to 1789 and to the preamble of the founding document of American government. And I quote, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. The whole big topic of American socialism should be the subject of another fuller show, in my opinion. But I'm going to leave it to you buzzkillers out there to decide. If you'd like a show on the history of socialism or social programs in the United States, let us know. Email us at info at professorbuzzkill.com. Reach out on Twitter at buzzkillprof, Instagram at professorbuzzkill, and on our Professor Buzzkill Facebook page. Don't forget to leave us a review on whatever podcast platform you listen to us on. Finally, please go to professorbuzzkill.com, click on the support the show button, and become a patron of the Buzzkill Institute and secure the Buzzkill blessings that this show continues to give. Talk to you next week.